been working on an article for Skeptical Inquirer magazine. I think I'm going to call it Cut the Sitter Some Slack. And if you've been following my channel, Psychics Explained, for a while, you will, you should come to understand that I have a lot of sympathy for the person who's the sitter. I'm not 100% sympathy with them because I do believe a lot of this is willful ignorance. But I think that there's a lot of things that we should make clear about what's going on with the reading being the sitter. And it's not as simple as what some people say, especially a lot of very cynical people in the skeptic community. They really get down on the sitters and they uh, belittle them. They make them feel stupid and that only somebody who doesn't, you know, have any critical thinking skills is going to fall for this. But it's just not that simple. It's just like with mediumship as a whole. It's not as simple as somebody's throwing out um, the alphabet and names like Mary and Marie and John and Robert. It's not just that simple. There's a lot of other things that are going on in the reading. And I want to make it a little more clear because um, when, when you are in a position of getting a reading, there's a lot of things happening. Okay, so just recently, and you'll find this video on my feed, um, that Janice Boynton, Adrian Hill, and myself sat down and we did an analysis of a medium called Fleur. And I think she's Medium Fleur or Fleur the Medium. No, I think it's Medium Fleur is her name. And you'll find it on my channel. And what we did is we did it on Facebook Live. So we watched a reading that Fleur had done with a sitter. We hadn't pre-watched it, Janice, Adrian, and myself. We just sat down and did it cold. And we, as we did this, as I said, we put it on Facebook Live. So we had people commenting as, as you know, we went along and made comments. And one of the things we really noticed, and I think it comes through in the video, is that even us sitting in our own homes at our desk um, with you know no stress whatsoever, we would listen to the reading and I would stop it after like a couple minutes. We'd stop, we had a notebook in front of us, you know, pens and paper, and we still didn't hear correctly what it was the medium was saying. And I'm not talking about exactly hear, I mean, we could hear it, but we didn't quite understand um, and we forgot things. I mean, the medium is saying things to, to the sitter and we would go, oh, wait, are she talking about the father this time? Or wait, which is she, which, no, she didn't say that. Yes, she did. And then we'd get into these little debates saying, yeah, she said that at the beginning of the reading. And we're like, no, I don't remember her saying that at all. And then we'd go back and we'd look and yes, that's exactly what she said. So even us in a non-stressful situation, we didn't even hear it correctly. And we were taking notes. It was just very interesting. And then when I went back and looked at the video um, and watched it again on YouTube, I realized there's a lot of things that I missed. And, and Janice and Adrian and the people on Facebook missed. It was really interesting how just the first time through, hearing it for the very first time, uniquely how much how much goes on that you just aren't paying attention to or you don't notice what they said or you hear it differently depending on what was going on really interesting so i want to throw this out here okay so this is kind of a um i've, I've got a draft of what i'm going to probably write for skeptical inquire and i just wanted to run this through because i want to make sure people understand that i am um, you know, I'm really into this. I'm really inter interested in understanding this. But sitters have a lot going on. And we should cut them a little bit of slack. A little, some slack. Not entirely cut it out. But like I said, so there's six points I have here. The number one point is that mediums, not mediums, sitters tend to, um, they were raised to believe in mediumship, an awful lot of them. They're 
especially if they're raised in a religion that believes in life after death, then how, how, un, you know, it's just a little baby step away from somebody saying, oh, but this one can communicate with the dead. You know, it's a little fuzzy here and there, but they can communicate with the dead. So why wouldn't a sitter believe that, especially if this is what they've been conditioned in religion? And there's m many religions that believe in um, a life after death. So it's not that all that unusual. Um, they also have peers that have had readings. And whenever their peers have had readings, a lot of times the it's just a normal thing. Of course, I've had a reading and this person was really good and that medium was really good or that medium wasn't so great. They didn't really connect with me. So those peers are giving you feedback. So when you're surrounded by people, not only in religion, your family and your friends and your peers are all like no skepticism whatsoever. It's very likely you're going to want to believe in something like that. Another really important influencer to a person to want to believe in mediumship is that you popular culture tv movies um you know tv shows ghost hunter shows finding finding ghosts and and um, connections with mediums that's it's common there's no skepticism there at all and so when you're raised in that culture and it's not even questioned. You're not you're not seeing skeptical inquire or skeptic magazines or anything of the sort. It's just not it's not falling into your lap. All you're seeing is people on TV who are telling you, oh, absolutely, of course this is happening. Even more so is the places that you think of are reputable, like programs you watch on TV, CBS, ABC, uh, Fox News. Um, all these places that you would turn to for weather, emergencies, um, you know, political, um, what's happening in the political world, what's happening in Europe, what's happening in Australia, all these things that are, that usually, to some extent, you tend to trust. You build a relationship with people who are on these morning news programs, especially, where they you know, you, you get to know them, you get to know the hosts who do, and the people who do the weather, you begin to trust them, they're local. And whenever they have psychics on, especially these mediums who are promoting their next event, they're completely credulous. They, there's no skepticism at all. They say things like, so how did you get your powers? And, um, you know, what does it feel like to be a medium and how do you handle the day? And there's no, there's no criticism. There's no skepticism whatsoever. So a person who's already kind of conditioned to believe in mediumship, it's not going to make much of a difference. I mean, it's going to make a lot more difference to them that the, that the people that they find are um, the, the people who they've trusted over the years, they built a relationship with are saying, of course, mediumship's real. Another issue is education. Now, this isn't, I don't want to say any, I'm not saying these people are stupid. I'm saying that, that um, especially in the United States, we don't have an educational system that teaches critical thinking from a very young age. We, we, if you're going to get your degree, at least in America at this time, uh, when I was trying to get my master's degree, I had to take advanced classes in college or I think I might have even had to do it when I was trying to get my BA. You start to take critical thinking classes, but that's like year one, two, three or four in college. It's not it's not like the beginning year of college. And besides, you're already in college. So we're missing out on critical thinking classes and and or just making it part of the curriculum from a very young age and there are some places that do this and there are some really good critical thinking classes out there but it's not uniform so people are not being um being conditioned to understand how to think about things how to um how to consider that somebody may be trying to have undue influence on you or how something may appear this way, but it's actually that way. I mean, it's not a common 
um, a common class. And I don't have a solution for that. I, I don't, you know, it just is the way it is. And that's what's going on. Number two, um, many of the people that are getting readings are in grief. They are in the process of grief. They've lost a loved one recently or very recently. And it could be a, a close family member. It could be a pet. Um, it could be a child. It could be um, somebody that they know on the periphery, like, you know, a neighbor or a or somebody from work that just really makes them start thinking about their mortality, their own mortality. And as every birthday happens, you know, they see more and more people in their lives who have died and they're starting to feel that. So it's starting to weigh on you more. So some people who are getting readings may have been very critically minded in the past and probably not likely to have fallen for it maybe when they were younger, but now as they're getting closer to, um, you know, what they perceive as the end of their lives, they're starting to maybe question things and think about hoping for a, a life after death. Is there evidence of life after death? The pandemic was really hard on people. I think this is true after anything that's a great tragedy, like a mudslide or something that takes out a whole lot of people or um, something very violent that happens or, um, you know, where sudden death happens. People are at a, um, a parade and then somebody comes along and takes them out. Those kinds of things that you, you don't even have time to prepare for, um, you know, even mentally to prepare for a death of somebody in your family. But a war, those kinds of things, those are traumatic. It's a long-term trauma to people. But the pandemic was really hard on people. And if you think back on it to 2020, what we went through as a society, it was pretty damn scary. It was just nonstop doom scrolling on your phone. And it was pretty bad. Technology was a roadblock to a lot of people because, again, we didn't know that the pandemic was coming. No psychic predicted it. We've looked into that. We've documented it. That should have been the end of the, the psychic world completely, but no, it exploded. More people went into um, um, the business of being a medium or a psychic. Uh, technology made that available to them. I mean, we could be on Zoom. We could be on uh, Facebook Live or uh, Twitter or Instagram and TikTok. All those just exploded. And so it made it easier for them to get into our lives. But as I say, technology was a, a problem to a lot of people because suddenly, especially elderly people were told, you know, we can't be around our elder, elderly loved ones. We shouldn't be near them because of uh, COVID. So we couldn't go into their homes to help them out setting up like a, a computer system that would make it so that they could be on Zoom and so that they could be able to um, see other people. So a lot of things dried up for, for people who weren't really technologically advanced enough to be able to figure out how to set up a webcam, see their family. Uh, they didn't have cameras, they, I mean, uh, computer screens necessarily. So... How are they supposed to all of a sudden <laughs> learn about technology if it's not been a part of their lives? You know, their social lives were going down to, um, you know, the grocery center and seeing people they knew and going and playing bridge with the friends or going to the movies or having lunch with their with people, going out and socializing at dances or at church. All that shut down. So almost all of their avenues to social, you know, being able to socialize with people were gone. And if you don't have Zoom or Skype or FaceTime and understand how to use that, some of these people don't even have smartphones. So they're completely lonely. And all of a sudden they're wanting to talk on the phone. And then there's the generations that don't like talking on phones. You have a you have this huge divide. It was really sad and it was very scary for a lot of people. So it's just a rampant loneliness that that permeated in our community. I remember 
reading very recently, like in the last few weeks, that there's an epidemic of loneliness and it's a health issue for people. And um, in, I think it was the Washington Post or the New York Times, somebody will remember, it was talking about how, I think it's the Surgeon General in the United States is talking about loneliness and how we have to combat it. Again, for not only emotional reasons, but health reasons too. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. And with the pandemic, um, it was an unknown future. And, you know, I, I didn't know what was going on, on and I was very tech savvy and you'd get d conflicting information. You know, can we pick up COVID from, a, from our mail? Should we wipe down all of our, um, everything we get from the grocery store? Should we have, should we have interactions with people briefly outside? You know, there was so much misinformation we didn't know. And so wanting to turn to somebody who may be psychic, that would, that would might take some of the stress off of a person. Also, we have this, this happening and I don't know about you guys out there. You might want to let me know if you, if you, if you want to. Um, how many people in your family or your your circle, you know, people maybe not you knew well, but people you knew of that died during the pandemic. And it was almost a like drop your family member off at the hospital at, when they were really sick um, because the ambulances were kind of hard to come by. Or maybe the ambulance was able to get your family member to the hospital. And that is the last time you saw them in person. Next thing you know, uh, you might, if you're lucky, get a FaceTime from them they would um, call you up and you could tell them goodbye, but you couldn't hold their hands. You couldn't go. You couldn't see them in rest homes or in hospitals. It, there was months of that and we didn't know how much longer it was going to happen. We're, we're, we were having this, this uh, like a, a wave of death. I have um, a very good friend's mother that I've known forever and ever. That's exactly what happened to her. And, you know, you can't even have funerals necessarily like we did in, in um, during the pandemic. We couldn't have people gathered together to have a funeral like you would traditionally have, like in your church or um, in your community. Um, and that was gone to mostly in some places. I, I think they still try to do it. So your last goodbyes were not like normal goodbyes you would have done in the past where you could be by their bed and, and say goodbye to them and or even have them in their own homes to die because of course if they had COVID you couldn't have that kind of thing um, so you don't have uh, they didn't have funerals um, even if they tried to do it over Zoom or something they knew that there's a lot of the the other their crowd their peers who wouldn't have been able to participate because they didn't have any way of looking at it because it's on um, the internet so these were all really stressful times and so for people to want to seek out a medium or for the mediums to be really prevalent you know these grief vampires because they knew they had all this huge fresh meat to uh, prey on um, was completely completely uh, rampant so number three mediumship and a lot of people don't understand this that are in the special in the skeptic community or even sitters that don't quite get it. And this is what my channel is a lot about is that mediumship is a skill. It is practiced. It's a con that is practiced. It's a slippery thing. And it's hard to define it to be uh, just one thing necessarily. I have a book right here. I was just going to mention really quick. This is Ian Rowland, I think this book came out in the late 90s. It's called The Full Facts Book of Cold Reading. This is really interesting. Um, it's like a go-to book on cold reading. But what they talk about is that um, um, Ian talks a lot about is that there's so much going on with mediumship. It is not, I mean, look how big this book is. And this has just got some examples. It doesn't go into great depth on on um, all the different situations and since it was written over 20 20 years ago almost getting close to 30 years ago it needs quite a bit of an updating but you know as far as um, the way mediums are doing now as they evolve to some extent but it is a skill these mediums who have done this uh, that you see especially the more famous ones 
they've had thousands of readings of people and maybe tens and tens of thousands. It, it's incredible. So to think that you're going to outsmart them um, is just kind of silly. You know, this is what they do. They're very good at it. So what sitters, an average sitter doesn't understand is that there's that there's a lot of word play that goes on. The words have double meanings. Um, the sitter also misremembers or they don't quite hear or they associate it with something else that's happening. Um, like somebody could suggest, um, I'm getting, I'm seeing a rose. And then the sitter knows they have an ant rose that died and they seize on it. Whereas the medium throws out the word rose could have meant many things. It could have been a physical object like a rose, or it could have been a tattoo, or it could have been an actual person's name. It could have been living, could be dead, could be an animal. There's just so many hits that are available, and that's cold reading. But the sitter doesn't know that. They're motivated. And that's the term I use a lot, is that the sitter is motivated. The more motivated the sitter is, the more likely the sitting will be successful in the view of both of them. So um, there may be other people who are involved in, the, in this um, con where people are... Um, in the audience or that have had readings and they are, you know, plugging the psychic as being amazing, or they could be in on it and are, you know, saying, oh, I had this most amazing reading yesterday, or he told, or the psychic could tell them whatever, and the person who's the stooge will be just like agreeing to it. I've seen this happen, and you'll find it on my channel as well as other uh, instances of that if a person is watching it over the reading like on tv or something you have to understand those are heavily edited and they're edited to make the medium look as good as possible so a lot of people miss that um, mediums usually who've done this for a while are quite charming they're personable they're charismatic they um do a good job making a connection with the person. They look them right in the eye. They are very sympathetic, lots of nodding, lots of smiling. Um, and so to a person who's a sitter, that's very alluring, you know, to, especially if you're in a state where you're very lonely and you're um, not making a good connection with the family and friends or your old peers who are dying out on you. Um, and so to be in presence of somebody who's really listening to you and talking to you about very personal things like your family members it, it's it it probably feels very good um i have mediums that are not mediums but sitters that are just so um they're such lovely people that they just can't understand that somebody would actually try to lie to them that just they're just very trustworthy and they don't see why somebody would do that to them. That just feels like, but, but they're, you know, they're honest. Why would, why would the medium cheat? Why would they even look them up? It just seems like um, it's hard for them to fathom because they themselves don't see life that way. That somebody would be trying to, trying to go to so much trouble to get money out of them. Most sitters are female. That's a fact. And I don't, I'm a female, so I probably have a little insight into that, but I don't have the answer why this is a thing. Um, whether women are conditioned um, to be more likely to fall for this, I don't know. Um, I think that there's probably lots of um, research still to be done in this area, but it is a fact that most sitters are female. Um, it's very emotional to be a sitter. When you're sitting down with a person who is about to tell you about your family members, um, you're dead and departed. Um, it can be frightening. It can feel empowering. It can feel like you are doing something you shouldn't be doing because maybe you you have family members who would see that as sinful or a sacrilegious. 
but still it's it's like that feeling of oh we're gonna play with the ouija board but some of my family would have a fit about that and so you feel like you know trepidation towards having your sitting so there's a lot of emotions going on there um, a lot of sitters are very invested in it not only if you're getting a reading in advance you've you bought your reading you purchased it sometimes you have to wait a long time months for your reading or even years for your reading and so when you've invested money as well as time when you finally get to sit down for your reading you're going to be more invested in it going well and you're not going to be looking for reasons for it to have been incorrect or anything like that you're you're looking for um statements that are going to make it seem like it is definitely happening you are definitely in contact with your dead loved ones if you had previous readings where you thought that they were successful then you're also going to be more likely to want to have success in this same reading that you're having for example when you've been told by the medium that you've seen probably more than once that your loved one has come through and their and that the message you received is that how much you were loved how they're watching over you how how amazing life is in the other side where is heaven or whatever you can eat whatever you want you can do whatever you want you see old friends you're reunited with animals pets from long ago everybody's together someday you will be here with us when you receive messages like that it's really hard to um, see anything that might damage that that um, dream that you have that that story that you're being told because if you were to find out later that the medium had just been making up stuff and he was a fraud or whatever then that's going to make everything that you've heard previously feel really like oh you mean all that stuff about how i was being seen you know that they saw over me they were at the wedding they um you know the pets are there oh that was not true when they told me they loved me that wasn't real so cognitively it's really hard to make that leap and understand that you've just been cheated out of a relief reading they they were manipulating your emotions so it's really hard to see that and i don't expect people who find my videos or read my articles or any of the other um great articles and videos and so on that other people have written you to think that they're just going to change your mind in seconds is just silly of course not it, you have to build up and work your way out of this and to some people i don't know if they can get all the way out of mediumship this belief in in mediumship it's too it's too hard it's too much you you've devoted too much emotion and possibly money to to completely get yourself out of this um so, also a lot of sitters are and I've, I've been doing this for a while where i'm getting a lot of people who contact me women um, and they're telling me they only have their phone they don't have a computer or they don't have um, a lot of skills and technology and and i'll say to them could you send me your reading something that simple could you you know email it to me or whatever they don't have any way of knowing how to do that some will tell me oh it was on a cassette tape and you're like okay that was a long time ago how would i send it to you i don't want to send you the cassette so they don't know how to get that off of there or how to take it down to some place and get it done or how to send it you know email is not going to be able to, to do it you'll have to go through a service like a dropbox or something like that but all of that that technology is a too much for a lot of people so whenever you have this um problem with technology where you're not really comfortable with it and i'm quite comfortable with technology but i still have a lot of problems with some of this so and it changes so often that um just because you are having problems with technology you can't 
figure things out because you're using just a phone and it's very small or whatever it is, doesn't mean that the medium is is not using a larger format, you know, where they can see things in more detail. They're, they may be, if they're hot reading, you know, getting information about you beforehand, they, they could be looking through your Facebook page and or your social media quite easily and looking at pictures and looking at the background of the person's pictures and they can find out all kinds of interesting things about the person and make assumptions about them. And so um, just because you have trouble seeing things on a computer screen or your phone screen doesn't mean the psychic is necessarily. Um, so they also, sitters, are not quite, don't understand how much information is out there on a person. And I'm not talking about just you yourself, but people in general. There's a lot of places you can go to. If you're if you're a medium and you're cold reading, you need to know the demographics of, of people. There's a, a really great book out there, and I don't have it handy right at this moment, called Passages. And it talks about demographics. You know, who's most likely to buy shoes? What state is most likely to have, you know, the warmest temperatures? And where, you know, all these demographical things. And that way they're able to make cold reading statements that seem, they're called Barnum statements, that seem very realistic. But actually it's kind of a, uh, applicable to pretty much everybody. People are don't realize that that we're more alike than we're different from people, even across the world. Um, even a site like Social Security Name Database, and you guys got to check this out if you haven't seen it already. It's a database of people in the United States who have had a child. I think it goes back into the 1900. I think it goes back to 1900, and it collects all the names of of babies born and registered and it's fascinating you know how how common the popularity of a name is and so i know i've used that site oh bunches of times for all kinds of reasons for research and i'm sure psychics know that as well and you just you know these things you know what is the most popular names right now if you had a baby what would it be named emily olivia you know liam well, what was it 30 years ago? What was it 40 years ago? What would my child, you know, I'm 60. I, I probably have children that I probably had children in the tw in my 20s. So what would it be 40 years ago, 30 years ago? What would be the names of children? And not only my children, but my children's peers and my nephews and nieces and so on. So, so common names, a name like Mary, Maria, Joseph, John, you know, they may, those are always common, it seems like, but there are names that have like these um, historical, historical uh, names that are more common, plus naming patterns is something I learned in genealogy, you know, it's very common in some countries to, or some nationalities to name your firstborn child, firstborn male child after your, your spouse. But in other countries, other places, it's the second born child is named after um, the spouse. And then a lot of others name them after their, you know, the grandparents. And it's just, it's a, it's, it's common, but it doesn't feel common when the medium's telling you this. It feels very specific, but you all know what I mean. The uh, sitter also isn't aware of things like um, ancestry, Facebook. How, how can, you can search on Facebook. You can search through somebody's posts and it's not hard. You put in the word anniversary and it comes up with any post where you yourself have posted or somebody has commented and use the word anniversary or birthday or, or death, obituary, funeral, mom, dad. You know, it, it's, it's, most people aren't aware that they can do that kind of thing. It's there. Newspaper archives. Um, you know, my sister is notorious for not wanting to be on social media. And yet I just put her name into a newspaper archive and there's all these stories about her growing up, you know, when she's eight years old, this happened to her and this, she was, she was in this class thing, all these things that happened way before the internet, they're there. You can't miss it when she was born you know, there's a birth announcement. Whenever she's mentioned in somebody else's obituary, there's her name. 
all of these things are findable. She didn't like that I brought that up, by the way, just, just saying. <laughs> but you can't hide from it unless you have some uncommon name. I mean, some very common name. If your name is Joe Smith, it's going to be a lot harder. But there's still ways of getting information about you, should they really want it. Well, psychics aren't going to go to the trouble to hot read you unless that is your thing. Because they'll just go to the next person. If you're too difficult to find information on, they'll go to somebody else. And they'll just give you a cold reading if they have to. No, there's always a line of people. <laughs> they don't have to give every single person a reading. Or they just give them a generic kind of thing. There's all kinds of services out there that uh, a psychic can purchase like a membership where they they can you know do unlimited searches on people get their criminal records where they lived have they been um had traffic tickets have they ever anything it's all out there and not only themselves but it'll show you if there's other people associated with you that have had these things done it's it's right there um a lot of sitters are not really aware of sociology and how 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 we are, like I said, interconnected with each other. And we're very alike somebody uh, on the other side of the planet. I mean, you could make a statement saying, you know, you've always wanted to write a story. There's a book in you. There's a story that you would love to have written, but you just haven't been able to get yourself to, to do this. There's a story. Okay, well, that's... That statement is a Barnum statement, and it's true for somebody in New Zealand, as it's true in somebody in China, and somebody in Uganda. I'm sure they all could say the same kind of thing. So number four, when you're the sitter, um, it's you're sitting there, okay? You're sitting there with the sitter. Let's say it's one-on-one -on -one in person. You're vulnerable. You know, your whole body is sitting there trying to listen to what this, the, the medium has told you is going to happen. And, you know, sometimes they say, don't give me any feedback. Don't say anything but yes or no, but you can't help but react. You're, you're, you know, you nod yes, no, or your face gets these expressions like, hmm, hmm, or, you know, you can't help but react. And that medium is very, very, very good at reading your expressions. You know, if you're lean back or if you're like, you know, that says something if you lean forward. And a lot of this is unconscious. So you can't help but give feedback to the medium. But this me, but the sitter has no idea they're doing that. After the fact, you could ask the sitter, did you give them any feedback? And they'll be like, no, I don't think so. Not at all. But actually they did. They gave tons. If you were to film them, you'd see all the feedback they give them. It's coming at you very fast when you're getting a reading and you are told to stay focused. You're trying very hard to listen to what they're saying and you're trying very hard to make sense of it. We're humans. We're trying to make connections. That's how we do things. And the medium has told you that you're going to have to try to make a connection. So, you know, you're already invested in this. You're a motivated sitter. So therefore you need to keep, um, paying attention really closely to what they're saying. So you're not really focusing on some of the other things that might be happening, like word play or, you know, words, you know, where words mean multiple things. Um, it's coming at you really fast. You're forced to make those connections. You're not taking notes. Most of the time, the sitter is not taking notes, even if notes were such a great help. I mean, notes are good, but then unless you're an expert note taker, you're not really focusing on it. You'll make things, you'll say mom, dad, you'll say quick notes. Most sittings are not recorded. Um, there's been so many times I've had people tell me that uh, they had the most amazing reading from someone. And when you ask them for the recording, they say, oh, well, I didn't record it. So they're just relying on their memory. Or they'll tell me they recorded it, but they... They're not going to share that with me because it's personal, they say, which, you know, I guess that's valid. But don't tell me it was so amazing. You've got this amazing evidence for life after death and mediumship, but you're not going to share it with anybody. I mean, that's kind of like, all right, thank you. Um, 
uh, or if they're recorded, it's on some device that they can't figure out how to get it to somebody. I had one woman, she had a reading and it was on a cassette tape and she hadn't listened to it for years, decades. And I thought it was the most amazing thing. It changed your life. It was this incredible reading of mediumship, evidence of life after death. And you haven't listened to it. And you haven't listened to it for years? Okay. Uh, <laughs> must not have been that great. Um, oh, oh, and this is good. So uh, the uh, author, Ian Rowland, was, was saying in, in his book, he was talking about that. And this is true. The mediums will be ahead of, ahead of time. They'll give a preemptive excuse for the failure that they may have. Oh, it might not happen today because... Or it might be this, or it might not be. I'll try, you know, that kind of thing. So that it it sets the expectations low. And then whenever they get to the point where maybe it's better, well, then it seems fabulous. I have seen so many sitters blamed for, for the fault. It's their fault that their loved ones didn't come through. They weren't worthy, I guess, you know. Um, and this blaming of them is, is is in, it's just like you're manipulating their emotions and then you're adding blame on top of it it's well i guess that lady's uh dead people wanted to come through but yours don't you know that kind of feeling it's just it's very manipulative and cruel i've seen i think of a sylvia brown used to would say well who are you gonna believe me or you know i'm the psychic here and then um john uh John Edward would would say, bring a family tree to the reading so that, you know, because you never know who's going to be in your family, who's going to try to come forward. And if you, you know, in other words, if you don't have your family tree with you, you may miss all these people and all the connections or um, <laughs> Chris, I don't know, what is his name? Chip Coffee. He's constantly saying, I'm psychic and shit. Everybody laughs. It's like funny the first time. But, you know, after fourth or fifth time he said that in, in, a, in a, an event, you're like, okay, it's not funny anymore. And then if you watch him multiple times, it's really not funny anymore. They'll say, go home and ask your family, call your mom, call, you know, look, this thing happened. You just don't remember it because it happened before you were born. I mean, really? But there is, there's a lot of blame and there's a lot of guilt that is uh, just poured onto the poured onto the sitter. Um, sitters are taught that the connection is tenuous. So, so it makes them even more motivated. Oh yeah, it's not really clear. It's not completely clear coming in on over there. So a sitter may validate something because it seems close to what they know is the truth because you know it's not an exact science and maybe the psychic is just kind of it's a little blurry and you know the psychics have all kinds of excuses these mediums are constantly like well i just see like i see emojis and i see hand signals and this is my or they tell me this they put like a heart around your name and 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 that's my that's my way of saying it's a love interest. Oh, look, he's handing me a birthday cake. I So he's trying to say it's a birthday. He's showing me a birthday. This is stuff they've made up, right? So, but the sitter doesn't know that. The sitter doesn't know these things. You know, we know all these old tropes, um, coins. You're going to find coins. Uh, are you hearing music? Um, is there something going on with your TV set or your phone? Have you picked up the phone and there's nobody there on the other end? Um, have you found feathers or leaves? Or um, there was a stone that you picked up that was heart-shaped or whatever. Somebody saw a, a, all that. Are, those are common tropes to people like myself who research mediumship. But the sitter, that might be the first time they've ever heard it. And they don't know anything about coins or or clouds or feathers or anything like that as a common thing. Oh, are you getting cardinals? Are you seeing birds? Was it butterflies? You know, we just got, oh, brother. You know, it's like one of those bingo cards that you put all the cold reading on it. 
and you can just like check them off as they go. But to the sitter, that's like, I did. There was a hummingbird that was at my door and it's it was there for days. Oh my gosh. And my mom, she had a hummingbird tattoo. So maybe that's the connection. You know, we're trying to make a connection. The sitter is trying so hard to make that connection. And they're going to find a way of making it successful. Um, the sitter misinterprets what is said. This is very common, especially after the fact. Whenever you're saying, um, I have, you know, you're telling your coworker, or your family, you said, oh my gosh, my aunt Rose came through with this medium that I went to go see last week. Oh my gosh, she was amazing. I can't believe it. She she knew that uh, my aunt loved to cook. Um, she was she was um, you know spunky kind of person, and she even loved flowers. And there was this dog that I think that might have been Rose's dog when she was a little girl. That was there over there with her. Okay, so that's what is said the next day whenever you're talking about it to your coworkers or your family. But what has actually happened is the medium says, I'm getting a rose. Does that mean anything to you? And you say, I have an aunt rose. And then they say something about a small dog. I'm seeing a small dog. And you equate that to rose because it happened right after. And you say, oh, I think she did have a small dog. And it was brown and its name was Fluffy, you know, whatever. And so whenever, so the psychic isn't saying uh, your aunt's name is Rose and she had a small dog named Fluffy, but you're interpreting it that way. And when you go to tell the story later of how you had this amazing reading, you say, my aunt Rose came through and the psychic knew all about her dog named Fluffy. And it's just this perpetuates it because as you tell as the sitters these motivated sitters who had this successful reading they tell their co-workers and friends about the amazing psychic and then now those amazing psychic those friends and co-workers and so on will say i must have a reading also and that sounds amazing i would love to be in touch with so and so and they buy into it because you have just given them this great endorsement for the medium when the medium really wasn't anything special at all i have this i hear about these kinds of things constantly what we need is we need the actual audio of what actually happened and then we need people to be willing to listen to um how it goes you know what was going on the tricks of the trade number five i'm almost done number five people can't see the harm in this it's just all fun and games no it is not. They feel comfort. They feel better. Okay, well, no. Lying to people, manipulating their emotions is not comfort. It's not better. It's not healthy. If you're really having problems with um, a loved one's passing on, um, a child or a pet, there's probably better ways of dealing with it than going to a medium who's only trying to get a hook in you to continue manipulating you. And it's just wrong to lie to people. If you go to a movie and you or you see, a, um, listen to music and you feel good, you feel like, wow, I'm motivated, I'm inspired. That movie touched me or that book I'm reading really touched me. That's fine. That's wonderful. That's great. You still know it's a book. You still know it's a movie. You still know it was a music a performance. It touches you. It's wonderful. It's inspiring. It, it makes you feel and think things that are that maybe help you out in life. That makes you feel good. And that does do good things for you. It's manipulative. Sure. But we know. We made the presumption that we were being manipulated when we watched that movie that tearjerker movie that made you cry or that um, romance movie that or book that you read it makes you um, it fulfills something in you and it, and it makes you feel good you know that it's just it's something you bought into 
but it doesn't make it true. And lastly, um, what I wanted to say is that um, number six, and the last one is that, that a lot of sitters are being told and discouraged from having anything to do with watching a video like this or hanging out with anybody like me. Um, we're, we're evil. We're, we're uh, debunkers. We're atheists. We're, we just don't believe. We can't see. We're closed-minded. Just on and on with the pejoratives. We're not good people. And we are, um, you know, not to be believed, not to be listened to, not to be, not, not to read anything we're doing. It's a lot going on in that way. So it's very hard to get um, a sitter to understand that um, we're just people, you know, this is just an interest of mine and I've been doing it for a long time. So you get to be pretty good at it. And I have lots of people that I, um, uh, that have taught me over the years. So it's not like I'm, um, I wouldn't think I'm a bad person. The people who love me don't think I'm a bad person. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe, maybe to some people, I guess I am. So all of that, and that was very long, I'm sorry, but it was very long. And I think it needs to be said that the sitter is has a lot going on. There's a lot going on whenever a person sits down for a reading. You know, all of those things I said, all those six points and all the things in between it. But it should not completely um, give them a pass. Because all of this information is out there. All of the all of the answers to all of this stuff is out there. And I just showed you one book, but here's a stack of books. Let's see if I can lift it up. But I'm probably going to be doing um, something on. And I have another one that is out of my reach over here that is just off of my shelves. This mediumship has been explained, the historical aspects of it, the modern day world. And in between, all in between has been explained, not only with um, direct things like with the cold reading, but like you can look at Psychic Blues, Mark Edwards' book on the 900 years, whenever you could go into the um, the world and get um, your, you know, your column up and that kind of thing before the internet. This is a wonderful book about that kind of stuff. And then if you even want more, we've got Nightmare Alley that talks about the 30s. And what it was like behind the scenes. And here's a book on on um, spirit photography. And oh, oh my gosh, there's so much history and so much to explain. This is, what I'm doing is not new. I'm just using a new method of using this on YouTube and explaining it in depth and breaking down the readings because the technology has changed so I can do that kind of thing. But if somebody really wants to understand mediumship and what's going on, it's at your fingertips and it's always been at your fingertips for anybody living today. It's always the information's been out there. So to not look is willful ignorance. It's not as if we've been hiding these secrets for a long time from people. If they wanted to know they're knowable. So the sitter shouldn't have a complete pass because Yes, there's a lot of reasons why they believe and they continue to believe culturally, um, you know, and, you know, peer pressure and what they see on TV and all that other stuff. And when they finally get a reading, it feels believable because of these other reasons. But the information is there. I hope that you enjoy these kinds of videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, I really really look forward to your feedback. I um, would appreciate if you would hit like and share and comment about my videos. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of research that goes into this. Uh, as I said, I've got lots of people behind me who've done this in the past. I'm just trying to give it to you in a new format. But I think it's important that we, we concentrate on the idea that the sitter is not some dumb person out there who just just can't get it they can get it they can understand this but you may have other difficulties like grief and other reasons that they 
they they can't just change on a dime it takes time to understand the flaws of mediumship and get to a point where you will um, come out of it like um what is it they always say oh when you finally point out a medium has been cheating or hot reading or whatever finally maybe they'll say oh that psychic has been doing this oh my gosh not my psychic though that psychic yeah there's always been frauds and everything they're a fraud but not my psychic so it takes a long time for somebody to get to a point where okay all psychics i get it okay how many psychics can i look at how many mediums can we go to before we have to keep unter overturning the rock to find that there is nobody out there who does it just it's not even possible give me a break come on i mean no no so if you would please be so kind as to subscribe and to like and leave me comments, I would appreciate it. I'm hopefully going to go and do a little more in depth on some of these books that I highly recommend and um, look for that video coming up in the future. Thanks, everybody.